Boy, these bad losses sure feel bad. The Bengals are seven and six. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. The Bengals lose in overtime to the San Francisco 49ers, 26-23, to and many, as far as I can tell, in Bengals social media, James, if you would like to join me up, uh, up where oh, your camera is. Good morning. No, I, I was asleep like the Bengals offense was for the first three-plus quarters of the game. Sorry about that, Jake. I'm up now. Are we down two scores? Okay, there, there goes the bit. He's Jake Lisko. I'm James Rapine. Welcome to Locked On Bengals. Go ahead, Jake. That's a good, that's a good start <laughs> to the show. Uh, a lot of Bengals fans, James, on social media are blaming coaching exclusively for this loss, or, or predominantly, mm. I should say. And I think that we need to talk about that. But a lot to unpack here. The first half, uh disaster that felt a lot like what we've seen from this team lately, but it's, it's, it's always somebody new. And this week it's, it's Darius Phillips and, and almost Stanley Morgan. I almost have to say something bad about Stanley Morgan who went in as a kick returner. And, and it got to the point where Bengals fans were cheering for touchbacks on kickoffs because they didn't have to have a guy field a, a kick, but Darius Phillips, he has, according to every stat service I can find, he has 26 career punt returns before today. He had one muffed kick before today. Yep. And in the space of four kick returns today, he he injured himself somehow. I don't know what the injury was, but he muffed two kicks. And he injured himself on the first one. He had two clean, fielded, kicked, one, one kick off, one punt. And then he muffed another one. This The second one was, was an absolute knockout blow. The, the 49ers were like plus 100 yards. They had two explosive plays on punts. And both yeah. of them put them, you know, red zone, red zone fringe. And that's 10 points that, mm-hmm. and, and we'll talk more about one of those possessions, but 10 points off of two muffed punts and the Bengals scored 20 points of 49ers scored 20 points in regulation. I mean, y- y- it's hard to look past that and say, yes, there were other issues for sure. But I mean, hard to say there's anything more pressing than Darius Phillips miscues today. Yeah, they were awful. I mean, it, it set the entire team back. And in a game where Joe Burrow doesn't throw an interception, you're not having, you know, a, a Jamar Chase fumble or, uh, you know, weird Jamar Chase interception or whatever you want to say. None of this weird stuff happened. Joe Mixon didn't fumble. The offense took care of the ball. And then you have Darius Phillips suddenly has butterfingers. And then you don't have any reliable options. So you have to go to Tyler Boyd. I'm done with it. I'm telling you now, Trent Taylor. One, could have been active today and had a revenge game against the 49ers. Two, should be active next week to play the Broncos because he'll at least catch the damn ball. And in that matter, like that, you're right. It probably did potentially cost them the game. We'll get to to Zach Taylor because I think Zach Taylor cost them the game. And when you have those two things, miscues and bad coaching in critical moments, not the whole game, but critical moments, you're going to lose more than you win, especially against a team like the 49ers that expects to make the playoffs. Yeah, we can we can certainly spend a whole segment on Taylor. Maybe we'll do that segment two because there's there's some other things to this game I think we can talk about first. Uh, and, and a couple updates we should probably hit. Riley Reef left the game. He aggravated his ankle injury. And that's why you saw Isaiah Prince going up against Nick Bosa in the second half. And that predictably didn't go great. The offensive line had its issues today, and it was it was everybody. Nobody could block Nick Bosa. Nobody, no matter where he lined up, and he moved around. And generally speaking, the offensive line, I, I don't know if any of them had a good game. I, I haven't gone back to look yet. Obviously, it's too early, but pass protection was bad. Run blocking, the, the run game just didn't get going, and the Bengals tried a lot. They, they threw a lot of running looks at the 49ers early, and, and it never got going. And so they were in this unenviable position in the second half where they had to drop back pass to come back in a game. They were trailing by 11 at halftime and we'll come back to the first drive out of the half because that's the Zach Taylor issue that we'll talk about coming up. But Joe Burrow played a hell of a game, James. I mean, there are some sacks that he probably shouldn't have taken. (laughs) 
And and if you want to nitpick, you you look at a couple sacks that maybe he shouldn't take, and you look at, you know, one ill-advised throw that maybe should have been intercepted, but you know, dropping dimes to beat cover two over the middle on the sideline to hit to chase to Higgins to Boyd, you name it. Yeah. I think Joe Burrow played another great game, and this is another one where just like last week, it feels like everyone let Burrow down a little bit and and he played well enough to win the game. And obviously there are some clutch plays he, he might want back, you know, some of those sacks I talked about, but by and large, hard to fault him for throwing some incredible passes under an incredible amount of pressure. For sure. I mean, the pass pressure wise, the pass that was just crazy was the one to Boyd on the sideline. Yep. But it was a 29 yarder, I believe. And the ball, it, I'm surprised it didn't get tipped, hit, and it might have maybe a little because it fluttered a little bit, but it was just a dime. And then obviously fourth and five. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Did, did you see the way they were just on a string together? It was like they were they were playing a, you know the viola or something, and I don't even know instruments at all. But, man, Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase. I don't want to hear – I almost cussed about uh, – and I would if it was just us, but I'm going to be nice because I know some kids are listening to this in the, the car with their parents. Thank you, kids, for listening to Locked on Bengals while your mom and dad uh, uh, listen to us talk about the Bengals loss. I um, I don't want to hear about the fifth pick anymore because Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow almost willed the Bengals to victory. And, and the throw on fourth and five to escape the pocket, find Chase, Chase just walks the tightrope. Beautiful play. Burrow said after the game uh, that he told Chase that it was his favorite connection between the two because Chase was running the opposite way. I can't wait to watch the all 22 of this, Jake. Chase was running the opposite way. Burrow just throws it to a spot where the defense isn't and just trust that Chase is going to get there. And, and Jamar did. So uh, it was a hell of a play and it got the Bengals back in the game. The, the tightrope that he walked to not step out watching it live. I was like, Oh man, that sucks. This is not going to be a catch. He stepped out. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't step out. He, he tight roped along the back of the end zone. And, and to your point, James, yeah, he releases the ball when Jamar chase is still running from right to left in that corner of the end zone behind you, I believe. And yep. then throws the brakes on and, and manages with the ball in the air to come back two, three steps in the other direction Great throw, great play. Uh, we haven't seen that off-script Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow connection for a while. We haven't really mm -hmm. seen the, the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase connection for a while, period. We got to see it a little bit today. Almost had three touchdowns if the first one would have held up. And, you know, you, you can fault his hands a little bit there. You, you can talk about his drops. But I think that this, for now, is kind of what you get. You get a lot of really good and he's going to have to work. He's going to have to continue to work on the drops. But again, you take that when he scores the two touchdowns and and he and Burrow and, and yes, Higgins and Boyd and even CJ Uzama, who I thought mm -hmm. had some clutch plays in this game, uh, you know, th they, they get you back in the game. So different difference maker for sure. Absolutely. doesn't mean he's perfect. I don't think people want to hear us be this, uh, you know, positive necessarily after a game, but you know, Burrow played great, and and the second half getting back into the game, it's hard to not be a little poetic about that, even if they came up a little short. It's perfect though, because we're optimistic about Burrow and we're positive about Burrow because of what's about to come next, which is if Burrow's playing so damn well, why? And we'll do that next. But man, doesn't this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching the sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbors, best friends, brothers, cousins log in for the good stuff. Well, I wanna tell you about a simpler way to TV, to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. It's called Direct TV Stream and it brings your live TV, your on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, shows all in one place. You don't have to juggle all of the remotes, all of the, of the different devices, all of the different, nope. One place, one spot, DirecTV Stream. Get rid of the clutter right now by going to directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Stop me if you've heard this before, James. The Bengals killed themselves early in this game 
made a valiant effort to come back in the second half and ultimately couldn't make enough plays from the hole they dug themselves. I mean, how many times have we seen this in the Zach Taylor tenure? And <laughs> I mean, you go back to, to the, the Cowboys game last year where they fumble on their first three possessions. We've seen it three times this year, the Browns last week, this week, just the, these turnovers that pile up, but the turnovers are only so much on the coaching staff. And you can make an argument absolutely that the Bengals should have benched Darius Phillips after the first muff kick. I do wonder how many coaches across the NFL bench a punt returner after one muffed kick. I, I feel like, you know, I don't know what his injury was, but I don't know how common that is. I, I do know that Phillips is not beloved by this coaching staff, and it wouldn't surprise me if he's not on this roster, quite frankly, at this point very soon. But I, I did have some specific issues with the way this game was coached, James. And maybe we should talk about those because it's not as simple as like they're not prepared and, and blah, 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 blah. I, I think that here's my four things. And you tell me what you want to add or, or, or argue with on this list. One, I don't think they had a good plan to punish the cover too high or the, the two high safety shells that they faced early in the game. They tried to run the ball against it. San Francisco very quickly showed that they had an approach to defend the run. And, and I thought it took the Bengals too long to adapt. Uh, I, I think they kept going back to some concepts that weren't working. The, the most prevalent example in my mind is they kept running the draw and it worked once out of like four or five tries in this game. Uh, I, I thought there were some kicking decisions that were questionable when the Bengals were fourth and short in the red zone, when the Bengals punted from midfield. And I thought that the first drive of the second half where they've run the ball three straight times after the first half they had and the decision to run the ball two straight times down in the red zone and overtime were, were brutal. And, and those are my four big points. When I say I have a problem with coaching, these are the ones that I isolate because you can credit Lou Anarumo for a lot that happened in this game, but when you look at the offense specifically and, and even the defense later in the game when they started having issues containing George Kittle, th there are some issues with coaching to talk about in this game. Well, I, I just want to go to the overtime. And, and there's you, you're right, but overtime, first play, first and 10 from the 25 after the touchback. Huge, huge moment, right? Bengals have all the momentum. They get the ball. They win the coin toss. The crowd's going wild. It's going crazy. I'm already starting to write the story. Oh, man, this is why you dropped Jamar Chase. The first play, they hit T. Higgins for 26 yards. Oh, my God, they're at midfield. They're past midfield. They're at San Francisco's 49. Then they run the ball. No gain. Then, holy smokes, they pass the ball. Joe Burrow, 23 yards to C.J. Uzama. How many times do you think he passed the ball the rest of the game, Jake? Zero. Um, zero yeah, times. zero, I believe. He passed the ball zero times the rest of the game. Joe Mixon right guard to the San Francisco 22. Then he went ran off the left tackle for three yards, and it's third and three. Joe Burrow gets sacked. What are we doing? If it, 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 that, That's what I would be thinking if I'm Joe Burrow. What the hell are we doing? I'm balling here. I got, I've thrown for 350, two touchdowns. Me and Jamar are the reason we're back in the damn game and we have a chance to win, and you're calling 28? No way. It's, it's not fake 22, 28, blast on one. Ready? No, no, no. Give the ball to nine and get the hell out of the way because because of Darius Phillips, um, the, the the offense's inconsistency, all of these things. Joe Burrow had to put on the Superman cape and had to give uh, another cape. They they found a duplicate somewhere, so Jamar Chase had to wear it, and they found themselves with a chance to win the game. And they don't give the ball to Chase, Higgins, Boyd. None of those guys get targeted after getting the ball. Uh, within really close to, to the red zone, and ultimately they got it to the 19 before the sack. Like that to me is insane. And you know what it reminds me of, Jake? Because see, now we have a pattern against Green Bay. What did Zach do? He got all tight and ran the ball after Chase had that toe tap on the in overtime where he makes that crazy awesome catch. It was he got tight, ran the ball with Mixon, ran the ball with Mixon. You know we know what happened. McPherson missed the field goal. You got to be more aggressive if Joe Burrow's cooking. And he wasn't cooking against the Packers right there, you know, way back in week five. Today he was. So th that's the thing. That That's the thing to me. And then the other one, tie it back, 
the fact that you start the second half, you're down 17, six, you have lost all the momentum because of the tiny penalty and the, uh, that cost you four points, essentially go get uh, some points. And they didn't, and they didn't even let Joe Burrow throw the ball. It's three straight runs in the third one, third and three, some AJP Ryan, please like, p- please stop. Please stop. It's ridiculous. I agree. And it, it's, it's it's one thing if you're like doing well on third and short and you're like, you know what, we can we can try to run for this because we've been a good third and short team this year. They have not been a good third and short team Trash. this year. And five, four of the five Joe Burrow sacks that counted in this game, because one of them didn't count. One of them was erased by a penalty. Four of the five Joe Burrow sacks that counted in this game came on third down. And they were all third and manageable. Third and four uh, was the first third down sack for the Bengals in this game. Came after a Burrow scramble for four yards on second down. I remember this sequence because it's two plays in a row that Burrow couldn't find the guy he wanted to throw the ball to before he felt like he had to run the ball. This might have been one that he stepped out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage on third down. I believe it was. The the next one is uh, third and five comes after a second down pass to Joe Mixon for five yards. Again, Burrow takes a sack on third and five. Third and manageable, for sure. The next one is after an incomplete pass to Jamar Chase, another third and five. And then the last one was in overtime after Joe Mixon's three-yard run, a third and three sack. So, you know, it's, it's one thing if you've been successful on third downs. The, the Bengals, I think, started the game one for five, one for six. The, the teams combined, I think, were one for 12 at one point in third downs before they started converting some later in the game. It's one thing if you've been a good third down team this year, if you've been a good third and short team this year, they have been better at it of late to be fair. But in this game with the protection issues they've had third down is going to be a real interesting case study in this game to go back and look at what they tried to do. If it was repeated mistakes because there were some free rushers a few times that created problems. There were some Nick Bosa problems obviously. And, and so You know, was it the play call? Did they not have a hot? Did they not find or identify where the the pressure was coming from? Was it the players? Was it the scheme? Because it was a theme. Four third down sacks on third down and manageable. That's just brutal. It is. And it's, uh, especially when you have guys that like a third and manageable there's multiple ways you get the ball to chase, get the ball to get this guy, this, like there's so many different playmakers and guys that can make a man miss and get, get the yard. It just, I just don't get it. it, it, To me, it's like the most obvious thing in the world. Like if you have Michael Jordan, you pass him the damn ball with the game on the line. If you have Tom Brady, you, you're not running the ball with Leonard Fournette in overtime. When Josh Allen and the bills just came back, what did the bucks do? They said, all right, Tom, go win the game. And he did. It, you know, it, say Peyton Manning. You, and if you lose, you can live with it. Today, like, I wouldn't be able to live with that. And Joe Mixon's great. It's not Joe. It's what has to happen for Joe to be successful on that. Or, hey, Burrow, you have eight different options you can go here, including scramble for eight seconds and find what you, you know. Like, it just it opens things up a little bit more. And I, I'm just – I don't want to be ignorant with it. You know, and say you always have to ride or die with your playmakers. But once they got the ball to the 26-yard line, first and 10, you're, you're telling me you can't take a shot? You're telling me Burrow's not going to throw another pass? And I know they called a pass and he got sacked. That's fine. But it just it's too damn conservative for me. And that is uh, – that's an issue because this coaching staff hasn't coached in a ton of close games. They haven't won a ton of close games. And they have 13 wins in three years. This year, they're actually playing in close games that matter. And I don't know if they know how to win them. And their quarterback put them in position to steal one. Steal one. And they uh, they were unable to get it done. It's, it's just really frustrating because so many of the players played really well. And the defense, I thought, played pretty damn well against Kyle Shanahan's offense. I mean, we talked before the game. This is, I feel like, maybe the first 49ers win this year where they didn't score 30 points, right? Remember when we were talking about that, looking at their wins and losses? First to 30 wins in this one. Neither team got to 30. More to talk about in this one as we wrap up our 
review our post game reactions of a disappointing Bengals loss to the 49ers coming up next. Maybe I need to get Zach Taylor on the built bar plan because maybe that would have given, maybe it's just not a protein bar anymore. Maybe it's a confidence booster or it'll help get his mind right or whatever the hell needed to happen. So he would put the ball in Joe Burrow's hands. I, I kid, I kid, but in all seriousness, built bars are the number one protein bar on the planet. I eat one every day, multiple times this week. I've been so busy. I'd eat two in a day. And it's like, oh, I get, I don't have another built bar. It feels like a treat because they're the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They're covered in 100% chocolate, high, high, high in protein, low in sugar, low in carbs. Perfect for you. Perfect for Joe Burrow. Perfect for anyone, whether it's a, a midday snack, a post-workout protein punch and anything in between. So check them out right now, built.com. And you're going to save 15% off with promo code LOCK15. So go there now. Built.com. Check out all of their different flavors. There's something for everyone at Built.com. And right now you're going to save 15% with promo code LOCK15. I think all I've eaten today is a Built Bar. This episode of Locked on Bengals is also brought to you by BetOnline.ag, who still has you covered for all of the props, odds, and lines that you could ever want or imagine. Maybe Jamar Chase's two-touchdown performance puts him back on pace for rookie of the year after Mac Jones threw what three passes you're going to give the the rookie of the year award to a quarterback who won a game throwing three passes. Maybe you, maybe you believe that betonline.ag has you covered. Maybe you like Joe Burrow's chances for comeback player of the year after this game and his continued gutty performances while Dak Prescott has some up and down issues. In Dallas, well, Bet Online has you covered there too. When you sign up today, use promo code Locked On. You'll get a fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. And if none of that sounds good, any other football, basketball, NHL, boxing, UFC bet that you want to make, you can place at BetOnline.ag, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. All right, James, let's uh, let's talk defense real quick. I thought that Lou Anarumo probably had a pretty good game. I thought they came out with a great plan for the 49ers early. Kyle Shanahan, Wonderkind, got him a couple times for sure. But I think that this defense, especially without Trey Hendrickson, without Logan Wilson, without Trey Waynes, without you name a guy, they're starting to be depleted. They're playing with two linebackers without Akeem Davis Gaither. Mm -hmm. I thought they played really well and I was really impressed with their ability to generate pressure throughout this game. Sam Hubbard, by the way, as our friend Brian Peacock uh, suggested or intimated had a pretty good pass rushing game. He had seven pressures at a 15% pass rush win rate on the, on the left side of the Bengals defense. That's pretty good. Trey Hendrickson got a sack, extended his sack streak early in this one on a little beautiful stunt to neutralize Trent Williams, which I, I thought that throughout this game, the Bengals had some really nice pressure designs that involved some twists and stunts in the front. They got some pressure with BJ Hill, with Larry Ogunjobi, with DJ Reader, even after Hendrickson left. So I think they deserve some credit for that. I think that, you know, Cheeto had had a fairly good game. They they did knock him for a touchdown at PFF, so there's that, but had a, had a really nice pass breakup down the field. Safeties, uh... Safeties were involved on some plays where maybe it felt like they could make a play. We're going to have to go back and, and see the safeties on all 22. We'll see what's going on there. Well, r- real quick on the safe, Jesse Bates had the game winning interception and he dropped it. He did. I mean, and, and so like, that's a play. He's had an awful year for his standards, right? It's, it hasn't been a good year. Make the damn play. Because if you make the play that <laughs> those are the type of plays that get you paid. And he didn't make them – he made a lot of plays last year, but there were a couple interceptions that he dropped where they could have been game changers like that, and that was one of them. And uh, yeah. we haven't seen many of them this year, but uh, had a chance, and he, he let it slip through his fingers. Go ahead. No, you're right. It's tough to argue with that. That's one of the missed opportunities for the Bengals in this game to go along with Evan McPherson missing a field goal from, what, 47, was it? And, and that's a range of the field that's like the only – chink in his armor it's his kryptonite apparently is kicking from 41 to 49 yards or 40 to 49 yards that's where he's i believe after today five of eight and i think he's eight of nine from 50 plus or or seven of eight from 50 plus so 
that's an area of the field the Bengals don't kick from as much because they like to go for it in that part of the field, obviously, but an area ah, of the field where he, it. well, not today, but generally this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm not knocking you. I, that's another thing that, yeah. Oh, oh. Just, just looking at missed opportunities, right? Th- those two are, yeah. are big ones. The taunting penalty is a big one where you have a stop and I hate the taunting rule. We talked about this before the game. Yes he probably broke the rule. It's still a dumb rule. I, I, I just think it's subjective. I think it's not called oh. consistently. And I, I don't know. It, it, it is what it is. I, I, I can see why it was called. I just think it's a terrible rule. I can't believe the yeah. NFL is, continues to stand by it. Yeah, we talked about it before the show. Not the game, obviously. But yeah, to your point, I just want to clarify. People are like, what? How would you see it? Oh, did I say show? before the game? Yeah, yeah, we, we didn't see this coming. I'll tell you that. Even though my prediction, I might be getting a beat on this team. My prediction was pretty close. And last week, I, I predicted a wild game, Chargers, Bengals, and the score was off, but it's a wild game. Um, so I might be getting there. Might be getting there. Um, but I, I'm not here to take a victory lap. I think the defense played well, but the problem is, and part of this is you don't have Trey Hendrickson. Who's your closer? You're up 23-20. You've been put in, in crappy situations, and you've come out of them outside of the timing penalty. I, th- I thought they played really well. Like you said, you force a field goal from the jump. Why does this team continue to put the defense in crappy situations? It's like two to three times a week, every week. Hey, please bail us out. Uh, no. By, by the way, Kevin Huber had a bad punt in the first half, too. They punt from, I don't know, the 50-yard line, and he gets it to the 20. That was brutal. Bad, bad special teams day for Darren Simmons' crew. But, uh, yeah. The, the drive at the end, you, you have to find a way. I, and, and that's the part that sucks because maybe if Hendricks in, is in there, it's a different story. And uh, it, it was the Kittle show. George Kittle, he's, uh, he's a problem. And, and that's where the criticism might come up for Lou Anarumo is I, I thought he had a really good it's plan tough. early in the game. I, I think, you know, Shanahan's going to get some from time to time and his defense was in bad situations. But for the first, I don't know, 49 minutes of the game, 59 minutes of the game. I thought Lou Anarumo's defense was pretty good. And then the 49ers go 10 plays, 50 yards in a minute, 19 at the end of, at the end of regulation to get a field goal that frankly should have won them the game in regulation. You can fault Shanahan for, for settling for such a long field goal attempt. Cause I thought gold looked pretty shaky before that kick in this game, mm-hmm. low kicks wobbling in the wind, he was getting the job done, but I wouldn't have had a ton of confidence there. So I would criticize Shanahan a little bit for that decision-making. But the the point I'm making about Anarumo here is, and I could be wrong, but I believe they went a little too soft to finish regulation and in overtime. And Mm -hmm. this results in Kittle finding space because they, they, I mean, Kittle's going to get his, but I thought they had done an okay job on Kittle for a lot of the game until kind of the end of the game when then he started clutching up and making some plays because Jimmy G played like crap. I, I I don't think he's good. I think he played poorly. But, you know, the, I, what? This is probably the first game when, when the Bengals have lost when their quarterback had a better passer rating than their opponent, which was the case today. Uh doesn't feel yeah, good I, when, when your quarterback outplays the opposition and the Bengals just could not punish Jimmy G for putting the ball in some precarious situations a few times. You're right. They didn't. And, and like I said, that, that Bates won't change. They win in regulation if Bates catches that ball because he so, might not have scored, might have, might have scored, but he might not have. But then it would have been like a, you know, a 15 yard field goal, uh, you know, it, uh, which would have been a ultimately been probably a 26 yard field goal because we would have gotten a bunch of Joe Mixon handoffs, which I wouldn't have argued with in that situation, Zach. Right. But I will argue with them when it's first and 10 in overtime and the clock isn't an issue and you have the ball in the 26 and your quarterback has the hot hand. You know that on fire on NFL Blitz? Did you ever play NFL Blitz? Of course. When you get on fire. You, all right, you, you go to the receiver like three times or four times. He's, he's on fire. That was Joe Burrow, okay? He was on freaking fire. And it wasn't just to Jamar. The touchdowns were to Jamar, but he hit Higgins. He hit Boyd. Anyways, I can't get over that part of it. And that's the thing. It comes back to this. I think my overall outlook of the team four months ago is starting to come true now. For And it's not that the defense isn't better than I thought it was going to be. 
But if this team is going to freaking win games now, the offense is going to have to be good, really good and consistent. Not 22 points or 23 points like they have the past couple of weeks. 30. And if you're not there, it's not good enough. And sometimes it won't be good enough anyway. But that's it. And it, they they uh, they should have scored 30 today, even with the, the Darius Phillips screw-ups. They didn't score in the third quarter. What the hell is going on? How, how do you go? You settle for field goals on two drives in the, the first half. And then you don't score in the third quarter. It's a, it's a hell of a hole to put yourself in as an offense. Too, too many empty snaps with with some of the with the way some of these plays went in this game, and, and too off, many empty off. drives. Too many empty drives. Right. And, and and one thing that really stood out to me when you reflect on the game is they've been great in and out of the half this year. In this game. They had a muff kick that leads to a, a, a seven-plus point swing at the end of the first half, and they come out and go three and out in the second half. And this is an area where they have been great. They have won games in and out of the half. Not this week. They needed a couple more plays. They could have made them there. They didn't. And so instead, we're talking about a 26-23, settling for a field goal in overtime. Very unfortunate loss. The, the playoff road with Baltimore continuing to lose still exists, but remains challenging. Establish the run, Jake. That, all right. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what else there is to say about this one. It, it's, a, it's a bad loss. The Bengals are, are four, two, two and four in their last six games, and we'll, we'll come back and take a look at how the playoff picture looks tomorrow. We'll get a film review after that. And then it's on to Denver. The Bengals open as one point underdogs. I believe I saw Jay Morrison tweet as they prepare to travel out West to mile high for another four o'clock start. How excited am I until next time Bengals fans. Thanks for listening to the lockdown Bengals podcast and have a good one.